we have a style of play that we, we try and stick to as much as we can, the formation, we, then we have little tweaks within it um, to try and counter the opposition, you know, like where we play with two sitters and a ten or a sitter and two ten. So we have the way we want to play and then we'll at times all the wee bits and bobs there, but I think it's important, especially in the league we're in, that you know, we concentrate the majority of our time on ourselves. <laughs> I think uh, they practice at training, don't they? They have a wee, um, a wee shot after session, in particular to the build up to, to that game. And I think we've got to see who's still on the pitch and maybe how they're feeling at, at that stage when, it's, when it is the penalty kicks. If they're feeling confident or they want to take one or they don't. They decided themselves yeah. for the cup final uh, because everybody took a penalty the day before, didn't, didn't they? We've done that training. And uh, whoever felt comfortable at the time, uh, they put their hands up and they even picked their own order as well. Yeah, it's, it's probably about seven or eight of them that wanted to take it. You know, I, I said the five and then they decided how they wanted to do that five. So, you know, we uh, it, I think when it goes to the, the penalty shooter, you have to allow the ones that are confident to step forward. You know, and we'll look, let's say we had eight. Was it the right five to pick? Maybe no in hindsight, but so be it. We well, usually go, we'll have a notebook and throughout the game we'll be putting some stuff in it but then I'll speak to Gordon and Lee probably about three or four minutes before the end and at times ask them what, what do you think, you know, what any ideas about team talk what we need to talk about and then we'll then go in and usually we'll give the players a couple of minutes just to get some fluids in and then we'll, again we'll sit and talk and we'll go right, because you know, there can be like 10, 15 points you want to get across, but realistically in that 15 minute period and the way the adrenaline's gone with the players, they're only taking two or three points, so it's like trying to get the, the two or three main points that are going to make a change to it. It wasn't, a, it wasn't any real tactical stuff, it was just really about being a bit more aggressive in the press. We'd worked all week in playing 3 5 2 and you know, trying to get out to their centre halves, out to their full backs, and when they came to midfield, try to win it. And we felt in the first half we were, we were actually doing the movements, but we weren't getting there and making contact with people. And if you don't make contact against good players, then they'll pop it around you. So the second half was just reiterating what what went right for us because other than a world day goal and a penalty, you know, Celtic didn't have a lot many more chances. And we knew if we got a bit closer and a bit more aggressive with them, then we had a chance. Of, they're coming back in it, which we did, and the news were probably the same, same wasn't it? A lot think, of change in it, wasn't no, it? No, there wasn't a lot of change. I think the, the biggest thing, the biggest message was pressing to contact, um, and then if we got a goal, momentum would have been on our side, and luckily enough, we got that goal, and uh, I think it proved to be right. Um, I thought we were the better team in the second half. Yeah. Well, again, you had to just believe in yourselves. Put that across there, mate. Believe, trust each other, and as Lee say, you get that one goal, then you've got a great chance, and you prove right in that in that situation. See, to be honest, I'm sitting in the house with my wee man, and I'm pulling him right next to him, and I'm, I'm talking him through the game. So he's usually telling his dad to, to beat it. That's me. I think you always put yourself in that situation. Um, you're always learning, so it's good to see uh, different formations, um, different ideas, different set plays, just everything about um, the game. I think you're always learning, so I think the more you watch, the, the more you learn. So yes, tuned into most of the games. There's, there's a lot of different things that you can do in the least, just finish his master's degree, I'm on it now. God is wanting to do something along those lines as well. He's been the last couple of years even thinking about doing it. So I think in football you you do your B licence, your A licence, your youth, and then you do your pro and, and most of us have had that licence for I was like 33, 34 when I got it. So the boys will be the same. So you need to try and find something else to continue to develop because we're asking the players to continue to develop and try and push themselves and, and learn more about the game. I think it's important that they see us trying to do that as well. <coughs> So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different things, you know, <coughs> webinars, licences, courses that you can do at universities. It doesn't solely have to be specific to football to try and develop. 
Yeah, but I'm into uh, books as well, and different books and mentality as well. And I think it's important that you're always on the move, meaning keep on learning, keep on uh, pushing your comfort zones. So, yeah, um, it's something that we speak about quite often. Um, how can we get to the next level, individually and collectively? And I, I think with the way football is in a, um, you need to, you need to continually improve uh, season by season. Yeah, I think with the licences, as the gaffer mentioned, we've got to do so many hours to keep these licences alive. But you know, we were fortunate enough to to visit some other sports as well. You know, we had a, a spell with the, the Scottish national rugby team. Um, I've had the opportunity to go to a basketball team uh, in the US as well. So you know, picking these kind of different different sports as well is always good good learning for us. I think one of one of the main things that I think going forward for for us is as a staff and most coaches as well is like how you interact with the younger ones that are coming through because you know we're all getting older you know and the younger ones are coming in the, the, the you know, social media you know how they learn things online you know they're watching match of the day or these tactical things and how do you keep up to speed because gone are the days where you know you can just come in and put a session on outside and it's like right this is how we're playing it as that's it done you know they need to, you need to show them in video you need to coach you need to talk them through it you know so a lot of different ways that they're learning also, they all learn. They learn differently. You know, some of them, you can tell them, and they've got it. Some of them need to see it. Some of them need to go and do it. So, but it's definitely something that we, as a group, need to get better at as well. It was a, a good experience. It was, it was different. We were working with players from different countries and, and cultures. So, from a, a coaching and a learning perspective, you know, you're you're having to, you know, deal with different languages in different ways on how these players come to training sessions, train and uh, and then play in matches as well. So, you know, from a, a learning point of view as a coach, it was a, it was a good six or seven years. Mikey, I think, Mikey, 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 uh, Mikey got about Lewis. three or four playlists, yep. yep. So it can change. We influence them at times, don't we? Well, we stuck a few tunes in there, yep. So He's easily influenced. <laughs> started what, what off tunes stick in there? And then for the Stone Roses. Stone Roses, Stone Roses Oasis. Stone Roses Oasis or Stone Roses Oasis, actually, yeah, we're really pushing in Mikey's generally. Like, see, to be honest, uh, with pop. See, see from the gaffer's office the last few days, there's been some uh, <laughs> some strange tunes coming from that. Check in there. Led Zeppelin uh, still haven't made it. <laughs> <laughs> see, uh, <laughs> still not there yet. We're waiting on that coming through. But. <laughs> Generally. 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 Let's move on for that one. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, we like to keep them on their toes. We like to uh, be in competition with them as well. So um, there's got to be a forfeit for the loser. And uh, for the younger ones, if they lose, it's usually a packet of wing gums, isn't it? Um, and we give them to them, obviously, if they win, which is very rare. And we have some with the first team, and that's for some beer and Moretti, <laughs> uh, lager, beer, whatever. Is it safe to say that your cupboards are well stocked with beer and Moretti? Yes. Yeah, I think when they, when they, they, the players have their own things, but they're quite heavy, so if we find something, there's sometimes we've got negotiation about where that fine goes. Does it go into the, <coughs> do the players find it about it, or do they do something a wee bit more uh, towards us? Elliot Freer's not got an excuse, yeah. he used pound £40 yeah. pound for his haircut and that was... See, to be honest, I've, I've not got any hair. Well, the gaffer's losing hair. Take the ice he the ice so I can't really speak it. So. <laughs> Oh, oh, <laughs> I pretty close. I was at Motherwell when Jim Jeffries. Uh, I think I think they bid a million pound for me. I think and Motherwell said no. But um, at that time, I was I was ready to move. Uh, but the club blocked it, and then I think the following season or the end of the season, I ended up going down to Wigan. So. Yes, very interested and it was really close. Game's quicker and 
it's more technical as well, tactical as well. You know, like you touched on it earlier. You know, gone are the days where you just turn up and they go like, an hour before kick off there's a team and everyone just goes out and plays. You know, it's teams are you know, every team in Scottish football now is organised. The players understand the game. So it becomes more tactical, but I, you know, I agree that the younger ones it's just a different generation, you know, different way of doing things. You know. Some of it's for the better, some of it's potentially not for the, the better for the development of the players, but it's the way it's moved forward. I think the, the, the big thing is as well, it's, it's elite athletes now. It's not just um, eat what you want during the week, you know, they're getting body fats done, they're getting fitness tested, everything monitored, there's no hiding place in the pitch now, so they need to be elite athlete status, and I think you easily get found out if you know that. <laughs> I'd probably pick Jig now after training with him. <laughs> no, I'd probably sign. Now, mine would be um, a player that signed for us would be Colin Cameron. He was a young kid. He was a. He played till he was about 39, didn't he? And, uh, Back, yeah. At Rafe Rovers, he, you know, he was a great young player and coming through. And I was fortunate to see him play, train with him. So, but he obviously signed for us, but good player. I won a cup with us, you know? Mickey, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know who would be playing with. Most of the players I played with were at Hearts anyway, because I was here that long. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of ones that were down south when I was there. Not that I can think of off the top of my head, to be honest with you. There's some good players, but. Uh, probably one player that you played with at Hearts then, one in this team. A tough one as well. Uh, a lot of good ones over the years. Probably got one of the best ones back already playing for us in goal. Uh, Rudy was a good player, me Paul Hartley was good, Mickey, with, uh, Gordon was talking about there, was uh, definitely drove the training ground, that's for sure, with his demands, so uh, there's a lot of them to pick, it would be difficult to signal it just one. Uh, Jimmy Bullard, for on the pitch and off the pitch. Quite the character off the pitch? Yes, quite the character. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Is there He's at James McFadden against right, yeah. France. Yeah. Are we? I think he's just going to beat that one. I'm <laughs> just saying. Yeah. Um, ah, to, be, to be fair, I think go away against Hibs was a, was a big one for us. I think you know, the boy I played against Bordeaux and one of the boys there scored at, at home for about 40 yards and he went in up at Liverpool. Rare, I think, James yeah. was a, a good goal. So, but I think oh, McFadden's is the one that we would all look at. You can eat what you want. Yeah. <laughs> to an extent, to an extent. No, you can not a player, uh, I don't know. Still miss by a player to an extent, you know, but probably the best thing after that. But you miss you, you probably miss the, the real been in the dressing room and so probably miss that the most. <laughs> Yeah, you're, mm -hmm. you're thinking about, you're, you're looking after the team as a group, you know, as a player. Why don't you look after yourself, make sure that you're fit, you're ready, you're on it, you know, and you, to an extent, look after the rest of the group, but it's more so about yourself. But when you come over to the other side, you're, you're looking to try and help everyone. So, it's a wee bit different. Um, there's a few good ones, but I'd probably go for Gennaro. Yeah, big M's of Hook, just for his... Uh, he was only here a short period, but he made a big impact, and also he was a great, great guy to have a bit. You know, great boys loved him. Just something totally different, totally different. I think when we, you know, I remember meeting him when he came off the plane and thinking, mm, God, here we go. And then as soon as he got a ball at his feet, he was, he was a top, top player. So I liked him. I liked, you know, he's. Don't get me wrong, we had a lot of really good players at the time, but he just brought something a wee bit different, a wee, you know, a wee spark to the team. We we're just looking for something a bit different. You know, we had. A lot, of, a lot of good players that were 1v1s in the pockets, more kind of lightweight. We were just looking for a, a, a target man that could come and lead the line for us. And, you know, he was, you know, through a wee period in his career where he wasn't playing, he was a wee bit down at the time. And we managed to get him in and get him on board and he brought a lot of, lot of laughs to the group. I know, I think we'll, we'll let that one go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks lads. Could okay, I just told the truth about that last question?
Is that 